In this video, we'll look at the uh, gas exchange system in insects. So in terms of the insects ones, uh, you don't actually have to know, a l know an awful lot about it, but you need to know the structure of it and then the different functions of the various structures and then basically what happens when it's active and what happens when it is inactive. So here we go. There's actually a lot of similarities between this, uh, the insect breathing system to the human, uh, the mammalian res uh, respiratory system. So we'll draw some links between the two. So uh, first of all, uh, you need to know that the insects are largely separated into the head and then the abdomen and then the thorax as well. So it's kind of like the thorax is the chest area and then the abdomen is like the tummy area. This is the beginning part of it, which uh, kind of runs between the abdomen and the thorax. This opening is what we call the spiracle. So the spiracle is kind of like our nasal cavity. It is basically the hole which allows the, get, uh, the gases to actually come in and out and also water vapor. So uh, the spiracle is actually controlled by a sphincter which basically opens and closes the spiracle. So when it's active, then it will open spiracles to allow more oxygen to come in. But if it's resting, let's say, when it's not flying, then it will close the spiracle to make sure that you're not losing excess water. So that's what the spiracle does. Then once the air goes in through the spiracle, then it will go up this main tube. And this main tube is called the tracheae. So the tracheae, as the name kind of gives it away, it's basically the trachea in the mammalian breathing system. So it is the main tube about one millimeter wide in terms of lumen. It's the main tube where the air actually goes into the body. And also it is lined with a specific chemical, which is a uh, chitin or chitin, however you like to pronounce that. And we say that chitin is specifically uh, important. It is, number one, it is impermeable to gases. So what that means is that gases uh, cannot actually diffuse in and out of the tracheae. So we say that that is not where gas exchange actually occurs. But the main function of chitin is to actually, it's a quite a tough chemical. So its main function is to support the tracheae. So to stop it from uh, collapsing. Very much like the C-shaped cartilage rings in our own trachea, uh, which supports and keeps it open to make sure uh, it doesn't collapse. So that is the trachea. And as it goes along, so kind of similar to our own system, it starts branching off into smaller bits uh, to make sure they can do gas exchange. So actually at this point, they diverge into the muscles part. So where, you know, the muscles where the insects need to actually start flying or jumping, whatever it is. And here I've drawn it at two different uh, sort of stages. This side it is when the insect is at rest and this side it is when it is active. So first of all, I should say what these uh, different branches are. Actually, these branches can be uh, thought of as individual elongated cells. They are called tracheals. Tracheals are individual el elongated cells and the idea is to increase the surface area. And also they don't have any chitin in it, meaning it is permeable to gases and hopefully that is obvious about what kind of function they have, which is that they do gas exchange. So actually the tracheoles is kind of like the alveoli in our own system. And if we look closely into the actual tra tracheoles, they're actually lined with water. Uh, there's a thin layer of water on the walls of the tracheoles and actually that means that gases can easily dissolve in it and diffuse across the membrane to the cells uh, around so these are kind of signifying the muscle cells and imagine if there's all of them surrounded but hopefully th uh, just these two will make it clear so like i said there are two different sort of uh stages of the tracheals depending on if it's active or at rest when uh the insect is at rest the tracheals or at least around it they will be surrounded by something called the tracheal fluid and because uh, of this fluid uh it basically limits the air penetration if it's just basically flooding inside. So therefore at that stage, no gas exchange is actually happening and actually they don't need to because they're resting. So they don't actually have that major need of the oxygen. However, when it is exercising, so when it is active, then it becomes a bit like this. So the idea is because of the tracheal fluid is there, what that does is that it it's got the uh, very high water potential in these tracheals. Uh, whereas when it's active, then these cells would be doing respiration and they actually do uh, almost like anaerobic respiration because they don't have enough oxygen, so they will start producing lactic acid. And if they have more lactic acid 
uh, in the cells, that would in turn decrease the water potential. And if that's the case, uh, that would mean that these cells would have a lower water potential than inside these uh, tracheals with the tracheal fluid. Therefore, the tracheal fluid, which is basically water, would then move out of these tracheals and into these surrounding cells. So it'll literally just move down and uh, around like that and just kind of leave the tracheals. And bi that's by osmosis. And actually, in that sense, you're, it's increasing and freeing up more uh, tracheals to do gas exchange. So there's a higher surface area for efficient diffusion of the gases. And therefore, more gases can come in, dissolve in that thin film of water, and then diffusing out into the surrounding cells, allowing them to actually do gas exchange. So this is the whole structure of the uh, gas exchange system in insects. So we've got the spiracle, first of all, which is basically the hole that allows the air to actually come in. Um, and it's open when it's active and closed when it's at rest. Then the air would go through uh, into the trachea, which is the main tube here, and that just simply carries the air into the body. And they've got chitin lined up along it, which is impermeable to gases and also supports the trachea and stop it from collapsing then it will branch off into tracheals, which are individual elongated cells for a high surface area for uh, efficient gas exchange. And it doesn't have any chitin in it, therefore they can allow the gases to actually move in and out of these tracheals with the surrounding muscle cells uh, next to it. Now, if it's at rest, then they've got tracheal fluid there, uh, which limits the air penetration. But when it's active, because of the lactic acid being produced by the muscle cells, that which decreases the water potential in these muscle cells, the tracheal fluid actually will move out of the tracheals into the surrounding area, into the surrounding cells, which means that the tracheals now have more surface area to do efficient gas exchange. So then the oxygen will actually also then follow the water into the surrounding cells and the carbon dioxide can also go in, into the tracheals and through the trachea and out of the spiracles in the opposite direction. And that is the gas exchange in insects.